All right, let's look at XOR encryption, which is a step up from the Caesar cipher. In XOR, you encrypt the bits one by one. So if the plain text is zero and the key is zero, you get zero. If the key is one, you get one. If the plain text is one, you get a one if the key is zero and a zero if the key is one. And it's called exclusive OR because if the two input bits are the same, the answer is always zero. And if the two input bits are different, the answer is always one. And the point is, this is an easy way to scramble data and it's very easy to reverse. If you just perform the same XOR operation again with the same key, it will undo it. Another way to look at this is every place where the bit, the key bit is zero is left unchanged. And every place where the key bit is one, you flip the bit. So when you encrypt it again with the same key, you flip those same bits again, getting back where you started. So encryption and decryption are the same for XOR. And so here's A and B, and A is this a 65 and B is 66, which looks like that in binary. And when you do the XOR bit by bit, you end up with a binary three, which is not a printable ASCII character. Nothing below about 32 is printable. So um, that's too close. However, if you do capital A XOR lowercase s, those are pretty far apart. And when you do that, it turns into a printable number, which is two. So that's why people, you know, XOR looks pretty good at obfuscating data. By itself, it's not secure, but it's parts of, XOR is used as part of a secure cipher like AES. So here's what XOR looks like in Go. Um, let me clear. And let's get the XOR one. There we go, there was a good one there, XOR one. All right, so again, just like before, I have a plain text of ABC, and then I'm gonna have a key, and the key is the byte of the lowercase s. And so now, just as you would in Python, you use the caret to indicate XOR. So after I've turned both of these into numbers, this is now the byte value of the character at C, and this is the key, which is a byte value. Now I can just do an XOR, and I can, convert that to a string and add it to ciphertext. So I'll, now I can just print them all out, the key, the input and the output, printing it in hex and printing it as a string. So we'll be able to see if characters are not printable. So that is XOR1. If you run that, there it goes. So the input is ABC and the output is 210. And here it is in hex. All right, so that's a simple XOR. And you can decrypt XOR in Go, which is going to be just the same thing, except you put in different input. So that's XOR2. You go through exactly the same operations, but you put in the output. So the output of this one was 210. And now I put that in as the input. And then I run it through exactly the same operation with the same key, byte of S. And that one here will undo it and turn it back into ABC as expected. So now you just have some challenges, decrypt stuff with a known key, decrypt stuff with only limited information about the key. So you'll have to make a loop and try all the capital letters from A to Z. And here you got a key that goes from zero to 255. And then there's a couple of text files, a text file to, to decrypt and an image file to decrypt. So you don't know the key, but you know it's only a single byte from 0 to 255, and you know that every ping file starts with this header. So you know quite a few bytes of the correct answer, and you could just use that analytically to find the right key, or you could just run a program trying a lot of keys until you get the first byte of this correct, and then you know what the key is. This one puzzles a lot of students, the two-byte key. If your key is two bytes long, then you encrypt 16 bits at a time. So if you handle bytes, you'd use have key one and key two and use key one for the first byte and key two for the next byte and key one for the next byte and key two for the next byte. So this makes the key space much bigger. Instead of it going from zero to 255, it goes from zero to 65, 536. So it's a little bit harder to guess. 
the two byte key from 0, 0, 0, 0 to FFFF in hexadecimal. And here you got a multi byte key. And you don't know how many keys it is. The key is a common English word, so it's probably a lot more than two letters. But you do know that it's an image file in JPEG format. So you should be able to deduce the key from that because you know the first several bytes of a JPEG. So anyway, there's some fun and games with XOR. <laughs>